Welcome to the Christian Worship Hour with Pastor Harold E. Salem. The mission of the Christian Worship Hour is to share the good news of the gospel with a lost world and to encourage and equip Christians to pray for our families and our nations. Please join with us and the members of our church family as we study the incomparable Word of God. And stay tuned to learn more about how you can be a part of God's amazing plan to reach the world. We hope you will be blessed by today's program. I'm Pastor Salem, and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. We're always happy when the weekend comes by. And that means that all over the world, we're going to gather around the throne of grace, and we're going to talk about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we have a special sermon, and it deals with the world of the demons. And so if you have a friend or somebody thinks they might be demon-possessed, you tell them to call them and tell them to tune in. We're going to talk about that. Can a person, a Christian, be demon-possessed? And the answer, I'll tell you right now, is no. But we have the scripture. You want to hear the scriptures. There's a wonderful scripture in Psalm 34 where the psalmist writes, They looked upon him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and them that, and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Oh, Heavenly Father, we fear you in a, in a reverent way. We want to serve you and we want to please you in everything we say and do. And if we're off base, Lord, we pray that you will talk to us and bring us back and help us that we may walk in the light, the wonderful light of the Word of God. So bless us in this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we get into this world of the demons, well, I want to share some of the letters. And by the way, get your pencil and paper ready and uh, guess, so you can take the ad address. And we hope to hear from you. And maybe we'll read your letter and it'll bless somebody somewhere. Our first letter today is from Newark, New Jersey. And this person writes, I like your ministry a lot. You break the word down to where a young child can understand. You crystallize God's word to people and who will be eager and hungry to hear God's word. I thank God for your ministry and may God bless you there and over and over again. Amen. I do appreciate God and I thank God for letting me become an every Sunday Christian lady of God who watches, who with powerful your powerful biblical insights. Praise God. Isn't that a nice letter? And then here's one from Kansas City, Missouri. And this person writes, as a, a gentleman writing, I was in the military, desert storm. I'm a disabled veteran suffering from chronic PTSD and other mental health issues from war. In general, my question is, and here's his question, can people with mental issues be in God's kingdom? And I can tell you without a hesitation in a second, yes, yes. If you're, you don't come with your mind, you come with your heart, and you ask Jesus to come into your heart, and you're a child of God, and, he'll ha and you have your place in the kingdom just right alongside the rest of us. God bless you, my dear brother. Here's Abilene, Texas. Your program is, is one that I watch because you use the Bible as the Word of God. No politics or sports, just truth. And then he says this, I'm a former criminal who was, has repented. God keep you. And isn't that really nice here? Here's this man and he's a criminal. And he finds Jesus. And he straightens up his life. And he's living for the Lord. That's the gospel. And we're transformed when we accept Jesus. And we're a new creation in Christ when we accept the Lord Jesus. And here's a man that's a proof of it. God bless him. Uh, let's see. I've got time for one more. Oh, I like this letter. I like all the letters, really. But here's one that really touched my heart. Milan, New Mexico. 
I am currently an inmate in Cibola County Correctional Center in Milan, New Mexico. Thankfully, we are here, are able to watch your program on the Word Network and certainly enjoy it. He says, I and my brothers have a Bible study uh, we like to do every night. Our access to learning materials is limited here. So we thought we would reach out and request anything that you might have to help our small group of less than 10 to be enlightened. And then he says, most of us are facing pretty serious legal procedures and believe in the power of prayer. I, and then you know what they did? They had seven men in this group, and they all signed their letter. And, oh, I wanted to read their names so badly, but maybe for just better reasons, just leave it with the Lord. And so here they are every evening, they, they get together. And we've already sent literature, and we're going to send more. And I just think this little group of men just might surprise you what God, how God's going to use them. Oh, it's wonderful, a wonderful gospel. St. Paul did a miracle in the, in the, in the uh, prisons in Rome. And here's some people in New Mexico, and they can do miracles as they tell about Jesus. But let's talk about these demons. They're just a terrible, terrible group of people. And uh, they have a regular world, a, a world of demons. And they're organized. And they're organized and they're led by Satan. And right off, let me make it plain. We're going to deal with the subject holy and what the Bible tells us. We're not interested in what these people who have had dreams or have died and come back to life or had visions and hallucinations and God knows what. The Bible alone is our source of income and the basis on which we teach and the Word of God will abide forever. So first of all, let's look at the world of the demons. The Bible teaches in no uncertain terms the fact that there are two very real spiritual worlds. One is good and one is evil. The world of the good it has God is the one who it worships, is worshipped. God is a spirit, John 4, 24. And there's a great host of angels called in ministering spirits that minister to the people of God, Hebrews 1, verse 14. These angels or, spirit, or, or spirits worship God and they carry out his work in the world. And so in the world of the evil ones, the invisible kingdom, an invisible kingdom, it's under the direction of the devil himself. And let me tell you, there's only one devil. Some translations of the Bible talk about devils. There's only one devil, but many demons. There are a host of evil angels, and they, they, they worship the devil, and they obey him. This bad and evil kingdom is arrayed against the kingdom of God and the good, and the evil kingdom is at war with God and with the people of God. And so Paul talks about that in Ephesians 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there you have it, a good and a glorious kingdom led by God, an evil and a wicked kingdom led by the devil, Satan. Now where did this evil come from? Where did the devil come from? What, what did, where did the de demons come from? And so we're told in the Bible, the only source of income for this information is the Bible. The Bible tells us that Satan was once a glorified, sinless creature in heaven called Lucifer. And he rebelled against God. And God cast him out of heaven on, on, to the earth. And with him he cast all of, the all of the people, all of the spirits in heaven that followed Satan. He cast them out with him. And they became demons. And that's where Satan gets all of his help. And so he became then the Lucifer, became the devil. And he now leads a great army of spirit beings in a futile attempt to defend, defeat God and to destroy God's people. The prophet Ezekiel talks about the very same thing in Ezekiel 28 verses 15 and 17. 
he talks about Lucifer and how he becomes Satan. He says, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was filled up because of thy beauty. Thou wast corrupted with thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And God casts him out of the kingdom with great power and might of God. And so with wonderful things we write about. And, and then Isaiah talks about it. And he talks about how that the devil was once so beautiful. He says in Isaiah 14, verses 12, 13, and 14, Isaiah writes, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, who didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And so here's Lucifer. And with all of his called son of the morning, and with all of his privileges and honors and blessings, he became proud. And he wants to occupy the throne of God. And he revolts against God Almighty. And the result is that cast, God casts him out of heaven. And instead of Lucifer's sin of the morning, he becomes Satan, the devil. And all of those who followed him become demons and work with the devil. So let's look at the work of the demons. The demons are just as wicked and evil as this leader, Satan. And the Bible gives us some description of the evil spirits. For one thing, demons are non-material beings. They do not possess bodies like humans because they're, because they're called, and so they're called spirits. We cannot see them with the eyes that we have. Jesus said in verse Luke 24, 39, he said, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye have. And that's why St. Paul said, it is not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that we have this great battle. Satan's hordes are not flesh and blood, hence they are dangerous to deal with. And no, no, we are not strong enough to handle them. We have to have the help of God. And so the Christians and the demons live in this world, in this society. And how does the Christian deal Satan with the, with the demons? How does the devil lead them? Well, first of all, don't underestimate the power of the evil one. Don't estimate his power. He's far more powerful than any one person. And the person who tries to defeat the devil on his own is headed for defeat. Satan cannot take us because if we have the help of the Holy Spirit, then we have the power that we can fight with Satan. But in our own strength, we cannot possibly do it. He can harm us. He can control us. He can influence us. But he cannot in, 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 enjoy, come into our body and dwell within us. And so just be very careful, my friend. Stay close to Jesus. The only answer is you can't do it alone. Even in the book of Jude, we have a one, the archangel, calling on God to help him as he resists Satan. That's how powerful he is. So we need to stay close to Jesus at all times. How do we do that? Well, we do that for one thing. We read the Bible and we pray. Read the Bible every day and you say, well, some days I don't feel like it. Read it anyway. Read the Bible and pray. Go to church where the Bible is preached or else if you're in a little town and there isn't a church that's holding forth the word of God, had a little Bible study group and then get busy for God and do some help to help people and keep off of the devil's turf. Yes, keep off the devil's turf. If you know something is wrong, if you think something is wrong or evil, don't feel, you don't feel right about it. Stay away from it. Have no part of it. Don't tempt the devil. He's looking for a fight. And he'll beat you every time 
unless you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you and you're hell, spirit-filled and spirit-led. Don't set foot on his territory. Don't take a chance such as horoscopes or Ouija boards or fortune tellers or black magic or white magic or crystal balls or tea leaves or seances or witchcraft or Satan worshiping the life. Don't get near it. And doesn't Jesus teach us in that prayer? Lead us not into temptation. Don't go into those places. And if you think this is all poo-poo and it's all malarkey, I'm going to tell you something. I know the influence of the devil from experience. This is what happened when I went to seminary 80 years ago in Minneapolis. Meetings were held in a, hereby, a nearby hall. It was led by a soothsayer, a fortune teller, or a spiritualist leader. And our school said, don't go near that place, it's of the devil. Three of us, three young men, out of curiosity and skepticism, went to that meeting. There was a crowd, perhaps 200 people. And the three of us entered and sat in the back row with our backs against the wall. And there was some singing, but never a word about Jesus. They sang to the angels, but never to Jesus. They never mentioned the wonderful, precious name of Jesus. And so this spiritualist leader, an old woman, was led out from the back room. She was old and she was wrinkled. She was blindfolded. She was going to bring a message to some of the people attending. And so we just kind of chuckle to ourselves. It's a put-up deal. She'll say this is a message for this person and it's somebody that's been planted. And there's nothing to it. And we're just about to laugh. And towards all of a sudden she said, I have a message for one of the young men in that back row. All of a sudden it wasn't so funny. And she said, I want one of you men to stand up. The old witch doctor says, stand up. I couldn't stand up, I was petrified. But Mel on my right stood up and the woman said, not for you. And the other man on the other side stood up, young man, he stood up. And this is what the woman said. You are engaged to two young women at this time. Two women you're engaged to and that you are going to marry the younger one. Boom. Why, we, we, Mel and I didn't know a thing about it. There was no one on earth that knew that except that young man and that witch teller. Nobody else knew that. And by the way, he did marry the younger woman. And so I can tell you that there's a power that the devil has. And don't you fool with it and don't you monkey with it. I was glad to get out of there and I would never go back. There is, there's a, they have great power. They are evil. They are sinister. They are haunting. And they have ways that they can deal with you that would, oh, my dear Lord, have mercy. And so that's why Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, verse 12, he said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Another translation makes this verse to read like this. For we are not following against, fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies, evil rulers of the unseen world, whose mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness could rule this world and are against the wonderful things of God and they are against the Spirit of God. That's precisely it. Don't poo-poo the realm of Satan and his great power. It is there. And so as I say, Jesus said, lead us not into temptation. And when we try to do the battle against the devil ourselves, I'm going to tell you, friends, we're in for trouble and we're going to be beat. Stay with the Spirit. Don't go on there. Don't go into those places you might be tempted. And if it doesn't smell right or look right or your spirit says uh, groans against it, go, don't get near it. Walk with the Lord. And remember this. The devil is a defeated person. He's a defeated spirit. 
Always remember that God is greater than the enemy. Always remember that Satan's defeat is certain. It's already been accomplished. It's all written out in the book of Revelation where he is cast into the lake of fire forever, forever, forever. And those who follow Satan and those who reject Jesus Christ will go with him. And that's why we preach the gospel and we preach, to our, preach our head off to you. You need to have Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus, you're going to be lost. You're going to be with the devil and his angels. Come to Jesus. Come to the Savior. Sometimes Christians ask, can Christians become demon-possessed? And the answer for that is no. Now demons may influence us and demons may kind of oppress us, but they cannot inhabit our bodies because our Holy Spirit indwells our bodies. And so we are partakers of the divine nature and the devil cannot have any part of it. Here we're told these are given to us very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world called by evil desires, 2 Peter 1, 4. And then he tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, he said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God and that you are not your own? And so the devil cannot because the Satan is greater than the devil. In 1 John chapter 4, in verse 4, it says, Greater is he that is in you that he that is in the world, listen to that, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He that is in you is the Holy Spirit, the Almighty God. And this been that God tells us in his word, he that is in you, that Holy Spirit, is greater than he that is without you, that devil that's trying to get into your life. And he doesn't stand a chance. He cannot enter in any way. Dear friend of mine, these are more, we're not just telling you fairy tales. We're telling you the hard facts of life that you're going to have to battle in this world and you need to stay close to Jesus. But when you, ever, when you say in Jesus' name, if you think your place is habited by the devil or if you think this, say there's evil spirits, you just say in the name of Jesus Christ to depart and they have to depart. Because God tells us in, in the book of James, he says that if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. He's a dirty coward. And when he comes face to face with the Holy Spirit, he's a goner and he's gone. And he'll have no part, you'll have no part of it. And so you're saying, oh, I, I want the Holy Spirit into my heart. But how do I get in my Holy Spirit in my heart? Uh, Jesus told us how. Jesus tells us in John chapter 5 and verse 24. Verily, verily, he say, listen, listen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now listen to that for a minute. He's telling us, pay attention. He that heareth my word, you've heard the word. We've told you the word. And the word is that you have to open your heart to Jesus and ask him to come into your heart and take away your sins. You have to pray like this. Dear Jesus, come, please come into my heart and take away my sins. And I'll forsake my sins the best way I can. I'll forsake my sins. And I'll follow you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. You just made that in your own words. You make that prayer and you have eternal life. So now look at that verse again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, you've heard the word. I preach it the best way I know how. And it hasn't been very good, but you understand and you know that if you don't have Jesus, you're going to be in hell with the devil. That's simply it. And so you make that prayer. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting life right that minute. You don't die to get it. You have your eternal life the very minute. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And Jesus isn't done. He says, and shall not come into condemnation. You won't go into hell. But you're passed from death unto life. You have eternal life. That's what it's all about. Heaven and hell forever and ever. And so you come to Jesus. 
Make that prayer. Just ask him you're in your own words to come into your heart. Tell him you'll turn from your sins the best you can. You won't be perfect. You won't be perfect, but you'll try. And then that Jesus will enter your heart that very minute. And he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that multitudes will open their hearts to you right now and make that prayer in Jesus' name. And if you make that prayer, you write to us and let it tell us who you are about accepting Jesus. And you have to have a send a gift. We have to have your help. We have to pay our way just like anything else, anybody else. We're not underwritten by any denomination or organization or a, or a corporation. We're just God's people. We're just saying, you tell the people that you have a need. James says, you have not because you ask not. We have to have your help. And you say, well, how do I know you're going to spend it right? I hear all kinds of stories about you TV preachers. Well, we're a member of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, an international organization, and they audit our books and pay. We account for every penny accepted and every penny spent. You have to write to us. Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57401. Now let's pray and pray for the persecuted church in Morocco, dear Lord. And we just know that many of them are worshiping with us. Help them to know that you are with them. They're going to receive that wonderful crown of life. Give them added strength. And Lord, as we think of them, make us stronger. Bless those who are worried today. Bless those who are sick. Bless those who have lost a loved one and the children. Bless us all as we open our hearts to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So we told the story the best way we can. And I'm going to have to close now. But I want to tell you something, that God loves you. He hates your sin. And he's going to put the devil in the lake of fire, but he loves your soul. And if you just come to him and make that prayer simple as it can be, he'll wash you clean. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He'll put you a part of his body, and I'll see you in heaven. And all of us at the organization here, we're praying for you. We love you. We want you to come to Jesus. And God knows I want you to come to Jesus. I just wish I could present it better or some other way. But it's the word of God and it'll get to your heart because it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so I'm doing it because I love you. Now for 60, for 76 years, preaching the glorious gospel. And it's more glorious and Jesus is more beautiful all the time. Come to Jesus. And then in heaven we'll see each other. And won't that be a wonderful time? I'm counting on it. You count on it. And we'll see you in glory. You've been watching the Christian Worship Hour, the weekly broadcast that brings good news to the lost and encouragement to the believer. We hope that today's program has been a blessing in your life. Support our ministry by contacting us at the Christian Worship Hour, P.O. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. Or visit us online at christianworshiphour.com. Be sure to join next week for another life-changing message from Pastor Salem.